Let us go to the book of Psalms. We are going to read Psalms 142. Let's stand as we love the Lord. Also, if you would like to get a DVD or a CD from Wednesday night on Lost Eden where my wife taught on the dangers of the Internet, please put your order in. Or you can go to the website. It's there for you to watch it as well at your convenience. Amen. Psalms 142, beginning with verse number 1. <laughs> the Bible says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, and thou knowest my path, in the way wherein I walked, had they privately laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge fell me, and no man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteousness shall come past me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully, or bountifully with me. I want to preach this morning on this, the prayer of David. Everybody say, the prayer of David. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother Reyes asked the blessing on the word of the Lord. This morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence in this place. I ask that you will anoint us that we might receive your word and fall on good ground. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word of the Lord. Whenever we mention the name David, in a lot of people's mind, they see a spiritual giant of a man. And the reason why I say we say that he was a spiritual giant of a man because the scripture emphatically declares that he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. And as we get a picture of a man after God's own heart, we automatically assume that he was so spiritual that he never did any wrong, that he never failed, and that he never had a problem. But yet as you read the life of David, as you study the life of David after, after killing Goliath, as he was anointed king and as he even became king, you will find that David was not a perfect man. David was a man that was vulnerable to situations and even he succumbed to some of the situations just as you and me. Psalms 142 is declared to be a prayer of David. A prayer of David. In your King James Version, depending on your Bible, before you read Psalms 42 and verse 1, it may say that this was a prayer of David or why David was in a cave. Amen. So David was hiding in a cave. David was in a situation that David was hiding for his life and he was running for his life from King Saul. And David had two experiences in a cave that Scripture records. Both of them, amen, he, at the, both of these times when David was in a cave, he was running from King Saul. Bible scholars, Bible commentators think that Psalms 142 is dealing with the first cave experience in his life. Whether this is true or not, I do not know. But what we can glean from these scriptures are truth. What we can learn from these scriptures are truth. That David is opening up his heart and David is crying out to God for help. And as we look at these scriptures and we examine these scriptures as we will this morning, then we can know and we can understand why David was a man after God's own 
heart. Amen. So there are times in our lives that we just become so overwhelmed with things within us. And as I mentioned, both of David's experiences in a cave, amen, he's running from King Saul. He's hiding from King Saul. He's trying to save his life. He's trying to run from destruction. So what can we learn from this? Number one, we can learn from this. There are times that we are going to run from the same things. There are times that we are going to end up in situations <laughs> that seem to be similar to situations that have previously happened in our lives. And when we go through these situations that seem to be a, a, a product of, of, of repetitiveness with in our lives. We don't need to give up and say, well, I've been here before. It doesn't seem like I'm gaining any ground. No. What you need to understand that when you're in these situations that repetitively happen over and over and over, you need to do like David did and ultimately God will bring you victory as God brought David victory, amen, with the ending of King Saul's life. But until that that ultimate triumph until that ultimate victory happens within your life you need to understand that there are truths and there are principles that you need to incorporate in your life that will carry you through these situations and not only these situations that seem to repetitively happen until you ultimately get victory but yet they will also help you and they will also be a strength to you and they will also be a guide to you that will help you through other situations and somebody say amen. amen. So there are times in our life <clears throat> that it seems like all we're doing is running but not getting anywhere. And then we end up in a dead end place like a cave. And instead of doing what David did, instead of incorporating the things that David did, what happens a lot of times, people that end up in dead-end situations, they lose all hope and they lose out with God and they ultimately turn their back upon God. Amen. David hiding from Saul. David and his family running from Saul because of Saul could get his hand upon them. That would be the end of David. That would be the end of his family. I want you to know there's someone that's hunting for you, and that's the devil. The Bible tells us in Peter, he is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And there are times that it may seem like that the devil's got you in a corner. But if you will hear and hearken unto the word of God today, I'm going to give you some keys. I'm going to give you some truths today that if you will begin to put them in practice in your life, it doesn't matter how loud the devil may roar. I'm telling you, God's going to bring you out and God's going to bring you victory and God's going to bring you deliverance that you can face another day. Don't say what's the use. Don't throw up your hands and say, well, I've been here before. I'm here again. I might as well just quit. No. Hear the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Allow the word of God to plant a seed of faith into your heart. Allow the word of God to plant a seed of hope in your life to know that there is a tomorrow and the sun is going to rise tomorrow and joy is going to come in the morning. Hallelujah! Because if God is on your side, you are ultimately going to be a winner and ultimately have a victorious life. From David's experience, we can learn some true Psalms 142 and verse number 1. The Bible says, I cry unto the Lord with my voice, and with my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. <laughs> the word supplication comes from the meaning of intense prayer and fervent prayer. 
It, it, it is not just a, a now I lay me down to sleep prayer, but it is a prayer of burden. It is a prayer of necessity. And because, as I mentioned, as David was running for his life and running from King Saul, he knew that God's got to move. He knew that God's got to intercede. Otherwise, it is hopeless. And it does not matter what the situation you may be in. Amen. Here's the key. You need to pray with a prayer of supplication. There needs to be an intense prayer that's involved. Not just say, oh God, help me. Oh God, deliver me. But as David recognized his very life was on the line, whatever you face a trial, whatever you face a storm, whatever you face a test, your life is on the line and you need to seek God and you need to cry out to God and you need to lift your voice unto the Lord because only God is going to answer. Only God is going to deliver. Only God is going to make a way for you. So David said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice and with my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. Verse number two. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed him my trouble. Amen. This word complaint is not as we understand just being fussy and being like a spoiled child and, and, and putting blame on God or putting blame on the situation. But complaining here to God represents the seriousness of his prayer going back to the supplication in verse number one. And it is putting emphasis that here I am, God. I am in this situation and it is serious. And so David recognized that when he was so overwhelmed, there was only one that he could pour his heart out to. There was only one that he could cry to. Amen. And when we are so overwhelmed, let us recognize that the only one we can go to is the same one David went to. For in Psalm 61 and 2, the Bible says, David said, from the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee? When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Listen to me. When you feel like you can't go another step, when you feel like you can't take another breath, when you feel like that all things are crashing, down upon you. Cry unto the Lord. Give God, amen, that prayer of supplication. He will touch you because I am going to go to the rock that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, when my mind is overwhelmed, when my spirit is overwhelmed, and I am at the point of breaking, there is only one that's going to help. There is only one that's going to answer, and that's my Jesus. I said that's my Jesus. I said that's my Jesus. Yeah. So David was in an overwhelming situation. And so he was incorporating what was written in Psalm 61. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Let me tell you something. When it comes to the spiritual realm, you are not going to overcome by your wit and your wisdom. When it comes by the, to the spiritual realm, you are not going to overcome by your own power and your own knowledge. There is only one that is is going to help and that is the rock which is called Jesus Christ because verse number 3 says for thou hast been a shelter for me and you are a strong tower everybody say a strong tower from the enemy. You know, this is really a foreign concept to us today, but during Bible times and even up to medieval times, whenever an enemy was engaging in combat, people that lived in the town, they would go to a tower and they would lock themselves in a tower. Amen. And they would withstand the enemy within the tower. You read in scripture several times about people going into the tower. Amen. 
into a walled city when, when the enemy would come. And so David recognizes that if I am going to persevere and if I am going to live and if I am going to survive, there is a tower that I've got to run into and that's my Jesus. For the Bible says when the enemy cometh in like a flood, he's going to lift up a standard against the enemy. Why? Because the Lord is my strong tower. The Lord is my rock and the Lord is my salvation and the Lord is my deliverer. The next verse says, I will abide, I will abide, I will abide, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of thy wings. Amen. When you're facing that heartache, when you're facing that situation, you need to be in that strong tower. You need to be upon that rock. You need to be in the tabernacle. I said you need to be in the tabernacle. You need to be in the house of God. You need to be in the presence of God because the only way you're going to overcome is to be in the house, to be in the tabernacle. <clears throat> I've talked to people over the years. Well, oh, Brother Uspan, I've just gone through some problems. That's why I haven't been in church. You know, that doesn't make sense. Let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Be honest with yourself. If you become deathly ill, you become sick, that you're miserable, what do you do? You go to the doctor or you call Brother Uspan and get prayed for. <laughs> Amen. But you go to the doctor, right? When you're facing situations that overwhelm you, you need to go to the doctor. That's the house of God. Amen. That's the place where Jesus resides. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to cry unto the Lord. I'm going to lift up my voice. And I'm going to magnify my God. Because it's in the tabernacle. It's where the word of God is. In the tabernacle. It's where the presence of God is. It's in the tabernacle that I am going to receive my blessing. I will receive receive my touch and I will receive my anointing. Amen. You're not going to get it out there wandering on the streets. You're not going to get it out there wandering in the world because if you're trying to get it out there, that's where the devil's going to overcome you. That's where the devil's going to trip you up. That's where the devil's going to deceive you. But in the house of God, you're going to have a brother and you're going to have a sister that's going to bind hands with you. Then we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I've got a God that's going to fill that place. And meet the need of that individual. And he said, I will trust in the covert that is the protection of thy wings. David knew <laughs> what he had to do. And that was to cry out to God. That was to cry out to God. And everybody say amen. amen. And then, of course, uh, verse 2 of Psalm 61 says, or verse 2 of 142 says, I poured out my complaint. I poured out my prayer. Not only did I cry, God, help me. And here's the key you need to understand. Number two, when you cry out to God, bring him your complaint. Bring him your prayer. You say, Brother Yuspan, what, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> All right, let me explain. I have seen it time and time again in lives of individuals that when they are faced with a burden, they are faced with a problem, they, they may do a little bit of crying, but they're not pouring out their complaint to God. They're not crying out with the situation that's holding them down. The Bible tells us in Psalms 86, and verse number 7. Psalms 86 and verse number 7. He said, in the day of trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou will answer me. Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee mighty things and great things which thou knowest not. So when you approach the throne of God, when you approach the altar 
and you begin to cry out to the Lord. Just don't say, oh, God, help me. But that's what a lot of people do. They come, and I don't mean to sound crude or hard, but they come around the front, they cry, they boo-hoo, amen. The, they just, uh, and that's it. At least Sister Tension thought it was funny. She's paying attention. <laughs> and that person gets up from the altar, and they have not received one thing. Why? I cried out to God, but you didn't lay your complaint. You didn't bring your prayer to God. He said, call on me, and I will answer thee. In the day of trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. If you want God to answer, you've got to tell him something. How many of you love it when you get a phone call? Hello? Hello? Oh, hi. Well, yeah, what do you want? Hello? What do you want? Oh, my, it drives my wife crazy when I call her on the phone. What do you want? Nothing. I just want to say hello. <laughs> That doesn't get anything accomplished. And that's what we do spiritually. We come to the altar. God, help! But we don't tell him what, he, what, what we need, what we want. And if we don't call upon him specifically, here's the key, specifically what we want, how's he going to answer? How is he going to answer? So, you need to be specific in your prayer of supplication before the Lord when you cry out to him. You say, well, Brother Yusupan, doesn't God know what we're facing even before we ask him? Oh, sure he does. Psalms 142 and 3. David said it. He said, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, you knew my path. When I was going through this situation, you knew my path. But what did David do? Even though he knew God knew this, he cried out to God. And he poured out his prayer. He poured out his complaint before the Lord. In his prayer of desperation. In his prayer of crying out to God. He said, God, this is what I am facing. God already knows. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse number 8, the Bible says, Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. So you say, Brother Yuspan, if God already knows what I'm facing, if God already sees my spirit, if God already knows the heartache or whatever it is maybe, why do I need to tell him about it? Why do I need to be specific? I'm glad you asked, and I'm going to give you an answer. Why do you need to cry out to God and be specific? Number one is because there are going to be times when there's nobody around you that's going to care for you but Jesus. Amen. Look what David said in Psalms 142, verse number four. He said, I looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge fell me, no man cared for my soul. So if you don't have a buddy to share your problem with, if you don't have a brother or a sister in God that you can share your problem with, who else are you going to turn to? You need to turn to God. Amen. That's right. Anissa, can I use you for an example? When you have a situation and, and you need your mom or your dad to answer you, you just don't say, Daddy, Mama, or Mother, whatever you call Sister Tension, or Mom. You tell them specifically what you need, right? Right. Even Ezra at 18 months old knows that. <laughs> papa, 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 Edo, 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 tea, tea, more, more, milk, milk, milk. <laughs> she knows. And if an 18 month old knows what she wants, how much more should we know, amen, that I need something from God and I'm going to bring my prayer, amen, I'm going to bring my petition, I'm going to cry out to God and I'm going to be specific with my prayer. Yeah, he knows what I need. 
But because there is no one else around him, I'm no one else around me, I'm going to pray specifically. Just as if he does not know. You say, why is that? Because the Bible says, number one, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Of Proverbs 18, 24, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So just based upon the fact that he is someone that sticks closer than a brother, I'm going to cry out to him, and I am going to tell him specifically what I need. And so as I cry out to him <coughs> and tell him specifically what I need, then I understand that I can cast all my care upon him, for he cares for you. Let me ask you a question. How are you going to cast your care? How are you going to cast your burdens upon God unless you name them and give them to him? It doesn't make a lick of sense. God, help me. God, deliver me. God, answer me. We've already declared he knows what you need, but he wants us to be specific. In our prayer, pouring out our complaint. Why? Because I cast all my care. I have got to tell him. You say, well, brother, use a pan. It doesn't make sense. Why do I need to tell him? And he already knows. Because here's the key. Here's the key. When you are specific in your prayer, listen to me. Listen to me. When you are specific in your prayer and you begin to verbalize with precise definition what you are facing and what you are feeling, we are recognizing. Not that God needs the information. He already knows it. But when I am specific in my prayer, when I am definitive in my prayer, I am recognizing I need someone greater than me. I need to go to the rock. Amen. I recognize not only do I need him, but my total dependence is upon God. You see the difference? God, help me. That's not really saying you need help from God. But when you say, God, the enemy is coming upon me in this situation, and this is what's happening. They are greater than my strength. They are greater than my ability, as David declared in Psalms 142. Then you are pouring it out to God that, Lord, here's the situation. I know you already know it, but now I know what I need. And I'm calling upon you because I recognize that I am totally dependent upon you because in you are my salvation. In you is my strength. In you is the joy of my salvation. In you is my deliverance. Hallelujah. So, God, I'm going to be specific because you will answer if I call upon you. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. So we call upon him, number one, with specific, definite prayer because I recognize my need and total dependence upon him. The Bible says, the Lord said, he shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. That's being specific. We recognize how awesome God is. We recognize how powerful God is. And then as I do that, I can say, the Lord is my light and the Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When I recognize a situation and I'm hiding in the cave because I'm running from my enemy, whatever it may be, hallelujah. When I pour out my prayer, when I'm specific with my prayer and I call unto God, then God's going to be able to move in my life. Then God's going to be able to touch my faith and I will not have to fear because I've got an awesome God on my side. I've got a God that hears my cry. I've got a God that hears my prayer. And I know God's going to answer my prayer. Amen. Why? Because in Acts 17, 28, for in him we live, we move and have our being. For we are his offspring. This is why I've got to be specific in my prayer. This is why I've got to be definitive in my prayer. Because I recognize I need him. I'm his offspring. And in him I live and I move. Okay? Also, when we verbalize and we speak with precise definition, 
and we are definitive in our prayer. We pinpoint it. We begin to understand what the problem really is in our own life. There are times that we pray in generalities, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when we pray in generalities, we, don't, are, we are not praying, and we do not understand what the problem really is. And because we don't understand what the problem really is, then we cannot be honest with ourselves that I can't deal with it. I'm overwhelmed. When you pray, and you listen to me, when you pray and you pour your complaint out to God and you're specific with your prayer, you recognize I'm dependent upon God and I recognize this is what the problem is in my life. And because I know this is what the problem is and I can't handle it, I'm bringing it to, to someone who is a God that can handle it. Because look what David said in our scripture reading. Psalms 142, verse number 5. I cried unto the Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. He's being specific. He said in verse number 6, Attend, I cry, attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. He did not just say, Deliver me! But he was specific, deliver me from my persecutors because they are stronger. Amen. So you recognize exactly what the problem is, what you are trying to achieve, what you are trying to reach. You may look at it like this. When you pray specifically, you're praying with a goal. You know, we always... We always hear you need to have a goal in life. And you need to mold your life to, to shape your life so you can reach that goal. You want to be a brain surgeon? Well, guess what? You're not going to become a brain surgeon by standing around at the pharmacy in Walmart. You can become a brain surgeon by going to med school. Then you advance from med school and go to specialized training. And then you become well, what, 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 is it an intern or whatever it is. And you hang around brain surgeons until you learn the skill. Because this is your goal. And it takes 8, 12 years of your life because you want to become a brain surgeon. But if you say, I want to be a brain surgeon, and then you go to your computer and print out a certificate that says, guess what? I, I'm, I, 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 I'm an MD. <laughs> You're not touching my brain. I'll keep what I've got. You're missing something up there. But you have a goal. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to become. This is what I want to achieve. And it's the same thing in our prayer. When you're facing your cave, when you're brought very low, and when you're overwhelmed, be specific in your prayer because this is a spiritual goal, if you will. That Jesus, this is what I need help in. This is what I need deliverance from. And when you pray accordingly, you will see the hand of God. Because then then you can be receptive to God moving in your life. When you just pray, God, help me. Well, what do you want help for? And then when God begins to move in your life, if you don't understand what the problem is, you won't be receptive to the touch of God. Because listen to me, even when you're overwhelmed, even when you're facing trials and tests that seem to have you back up in the corner, there are times even in those situations that God's going to move in your life in some uncomfortable ways. And he's going to require an act of faith from you. But if you don't pray specifically, knowing what you're praying for, understanding what the problem is, amen, you will shut the door when God tries to work within your life. There is something about mankind, something about our humanity that we don't want to give our problems to God because we think we can handle them. But we need to recognize and understand that only deliverance and victory is going to only happen when I cry out to Jesus and I'm specific about my prayer. There is a song that we used to sing and it's been a while since we have sung it. But it goes something like this. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. 
I come to thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. We understand when we pray a specific prayer, a point of prayer that I need God, that I can't handle it. We're honest with ourselves and we recognize our situation instead of trying to hide it and push it under the rug and make it seem irrelevant. We are honest with God, honest with ourselves. And when we are honest with God and honest with ourselves, then God will open up the door and God will answer our prayers. We see in Psalms 142 and verse number 7. He said, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. And the righteous shall compass me about for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. In other words, David is saying, I will and I am blessed. David knew and understood the fact that God was the only one that was able to help him. God was the only one that was going to answer his prayer. Psalms 118 and verse number 5. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. He brought me out of the cave and put me in the place of blessing. When we pray with an open and honest heart, we see God smiling favorably and answering upon us. Luke 18, verse 13. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And then Jesus said, I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Because he poured out his needs specifically, who he was, what he was, and what he needed. The other guy said, I'm glad I'm not like these other folks. I, I fast, I pay my tithes, I do this and I do that. But he was much a sinner as this guy was. But this guy recognized where he was living. He recognized where he was at. Let me tell you something. The cave is not the place where you need to be and where you need to dwell. And when you get out of the cave by crying out to God and being specific with your prayer and believing God because you're honest with yourself, then God can talk to you and God will answer you. We see this in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse number 11. And he said, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. Elijah was in the cave. He said, I'm the only one left to take my, take my life and kill me, God. But before God could speak to him and give him the word that he needed, the Lord said, go out. Stand at the mount before the Lord. Get out of this cave. And so as he went out, the Lord passed by in a great and strong wind, rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. A still small voice. It was only when he became responsive that God was able to speak to him when he got out of the cave. And it was so when Elijah heard it. The Bible said when Elijah heard the voice, he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And of course, Elijah gave him the same excuse that he gave him before. He said, you know, I've been, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because of the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. they thrown down thine altars. they slain the prophets with a sword. And I am I and the only one left. Hey, listen to me. There are times that you seem like you're in a repetitive cycle, but cry out to God so God can speak to you. 
And then the Lord said unto him, Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. The prayer of David. A man that he was, a man that was not perfect. Oh, he started out with a bang by killing Goliath. But after the Goliath experiences, there were ups and there were downs. He had victories and he had defeats. He was a murderer. He was a liar. Committed adultery. But through it all, he kept his mind on God. He kept his focus upon God. And as you read about the prayer of David in Psalms 142, he not only cried unto the Lord, but he cried with a specific prayer. He cried out because I know God's the only one that can hear and God's the only one that can answer. So let me challenge you. Are you facing a situation that you don't know what to do and you can't handle? Cry out to God. But cry out to God with a specific prayer, exactly what's going on. Because when you do this, you understand what the problem really is. And you also understand that only God can take care of it. And by crying out to God with specific prayer, you're casting all your burden upon the Lord. He cares for you. And then as you do that, God's going to be able to speak with you. God's going to be able to bless you. And ultimately, the end result will be victory in your life. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's stand.